We welcome all of you who have been watching Bedlam in Stillwater today with the Cowboys and the Oklahoma Sooners. Always a treat. Oklahoma State pulled that one out by six. One of a couple of close games. There was a nail biter that Kansas State won at Ames against Iowa State. Brad Sham and Stephen Howard at the Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska today. And the Jayhawks of Kansas, number two in the country, scored the first five points of the game. And now Brandon Ubell, a sophomore from Overland Park, Kansas, has the Huskers on the board. And that's why he's in the game, a guy that can stretch the defense and hit the wide open shot. And that was a very big basket for Nebraska to get off that big donut that they've been riding for the last three minutes. And a great reversal there by Marcus Morris. And what was it Doc Sadler told you how many threes did he want? Oh they just got to hit six to seven threes and they can play with anyone. They've already duplicated the amount of threes almost that they've made in the last two games. Shoot three for 15 uh, against Tech and, and two for 15 against K-State. So they're well on their way being very competitive out here. Almeida pulls it down. Jeter. Jeter's going to have to make those. Nebraska's. Although he can do that. Well, uh, also talking about Salad, they got to make about eight to ten transition fast breaks with that one man fast break that Jader runs. And when they're able to do that, they can be competitive because at times they struggle oh. to score in the half court set. Look at Marquise Morris block Almeida, and then Almeida comes back. And this foul is going against Ubell. Hey, now watch hey. number 34 here. Well, well, yeah, we're going to look back at that last play and see that quick hands. Of Jeter, a football player in Cincinnati, played wide receiver, very strong with the basketball, and you always have to be aware of where Lawrence Jeter is when you're the offense running the basketball. One point game early. Good screen now, Johnson. Elijah Johnson, who popped into the lineup. And you're going to minutes for him, sorry. You're going to see a steady diet of that pick and pop with Kansas. Literally every offensive set will end with a, a pick and roll up on the perimeter. You have to defend that well. Ubell responds to Markeith Morris slapping the ball out of his hands. And, and that's a huge lift. Doc Salas said one of these complimentary players has to step up. And Ubell already with five points. One below his season average, playing huge for Nebraska. Foul is on Elijah Johnson. Ubell getting uh, a start, basically in place of Tony McRae. A couple of moves that Doc Sadler made. And, and Today, Kenneth Lee Sadler has not beaten Kansas since he's been at Nebraska. It's the only Big 12 school he's not beaten. And it's really been a genius move by Coach Sadler to institute two guys in the lineup and kind of ignite the team ignite the crowd and they've done just that. Morning star. His 10th start of the year. Markeith. A foul before the shot and we'll have a break first and affiliate stations. This is break number 22. It's 9 8 Kansas and we'll be right back after this message from your. Today's Big 12 Network game is brought to you by Phillips 66, hardworking gas. Whataburger, just like you like it. Sun Life Financial, annuities, employee benefits, life insurance. Get free pizza on Super Bowl Sunday. Go to papajohns.com for details. Shelter Insurance, we're your shield, we're your shelter. Sonic, America's drive-in. And by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. We're only four minutes in, but there are a couple of reasons that the score is 9-8 Kansas and that Nebraska is hanging in there. One of them is on the glass where Nebraska out-rebounded Kansas badly in Lawrence. Today's Big 12 Network game is brought to you in stunning high definition where you're seeing all those uh, rebounds. A slim margin for the Huskers. The other one, though, 
is, is what we talked about a moment ago, Stephen Howard, and that's the two out of three three-point shots. Well, well, you're Nebraska. right. They, they are uh, in their last uh, two games. They're like six out of 27. Well, you're right. I mean, they're shooting just 30 percent, and they're doubling that, and then some early on in this game. If they're able to continue that, even in the slightest of margins, they're going to be able to stick with. Kansas throughout this game. You, you can see uh, Doc Sadler and his team are frustrated. They thought that the ball went off Elijah Johnson's hands, and uh, the officials ruled that it was tipped. So Kansas gets a fresh clock. Marcus Morris. Man. I mean, he is just so tough. He felt the body contact on the block fade away. You literally cannot defend that offensive possession by Marcus Morris, really feeling his flow early on this game. Almeida is out and Jorge Brian Diaz is in the lineup for Nebraska. This is Walker. One and done will not serve the Huskers well today. Well that's a long three for Markeith Morris. And, and that's where I, I, I think that Markeith has really filled the gap Slightly got a little bit closer to Marcus, really able to do the same amount offensively uh, of his brother, and they're literally interchangeable offensively and defensively. Marcus with a block on Diaz. Walker hustling to the floor. And stolen by Marcus Morris. Love seeing players hitting the deck going after the basketball. Scrappy game early. Morning star, a great ball movement. Look at that. Look how quickly the ball changes hands. Look how quickly Jeter steals it. Yeah, he's just so strong down low. Transition. Doc Sandler said that was so important. Caleb Walker now has five points. Well, you really see the importance of Lance Jeter, this ball club, able to run that transition fast break, get the steal, uh, make him come up with a nice transition offense. And if they're able to do that continuously throughout this game, it's going to give Kansas fits. Morningstar. Everything but the roll. Johnson got a hand on that fast break. Yeah, you can't have those empty possessions against Kansas. You, you literally are, are going to need to play not a perfect game, but a really, really good game. Yeah, take care of the ball. Reed. 37% three-point shooter, Tyrell Reed. He is one of two Jayhawks starting the game today who have graduated. Reed and Morningstar have both graduated. I don't know how many teams in the country are starting two graduates today. Well, well Morningstar at 24 years old is almost old enough to be a teacher at Kansas, uh, but that helps you in the locker room and elder state statesman can be a calming influence, so you can see that leadership in Kansas. Wow. Please, please. To the center. Yeah, and they can't believe it either. We're, we're looking at that last bucket. When you have your four and your five man stepping out, knocking three pointers, you, you see Marquise as the trailer, and, and it's easy when you can step into your shot, get your legs into it, and shoot it with confidence. I don't know what you can do against something like that, and that's why I feel they have arguably one of the strongest front lines in the country. And speaking of great shooters, all season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big 12 Conference. Today we'll take a look at Tyron Liu, great six-foot guard from Raytown High School in Kansas City, finished his Husker career with 1,577 points, drafted in the first round by Denver, traded on draft day to the Lakers, where he Won two NBA championships, played for several teams in the NBA, but ranks in the top 10 in 13 Husker career categories, including threes, starts, steals. Tyron Liu, a Nebraska champion. Yeah, I used to remember Tyron Liu would always put his imprint on the game defensively, coming up with huge steals for the Corn Huskers, as uh, good as, of a person as he was a player. Kansas doubling the Huskers to start off. And 31 is Drake Moranek. Transfer from Nebraska Kearney. Lifelong Husker fan. Now Jeter. Put on the line. That's a two-point basket. His first points. 
and, and this might be as good as Nebraska has played offensively all year long in the first half, but you're going against the number two team in the country. Mario Little, sorry, Stephen. Mario Little couldn't handle that. And it's Baranek who comes away with it. Lau Jeter, and he's bumped by Elijah Johnson, who draws his second foul. And, and what I was saying earlier, Brad, is when you're playing against the eighth-ranked offensive scoring team in the country with Kansas scoring 83 points a game, you got to be able to put up points. And, and Nebraska's doing a good job. They're just going to need a little bit more stops defensively to curtail this wave early on that Kansas has been throwing at them. Johnson with his two fouls will have a seat. Tyrell Reed back in. Reed has been playing with a little bit of a bad foot. And they, they try to spot him when they can. Jo again, Josh Selby not playing today for Kansas. A stress reaction to a right foot injury in practice Wednesday, but x rays are negative. Again, talking to the coaching staff, last game against Tech was really the first game that Reed was bothered by that foot. Uh, been hurt for about a month and trying to get him to play through it. Tony McRae. Well, it looks like Nebraska has caught the offensive fever from downtown. It really got a nice rhythm from beyond the arc, and let's see how long they can continue this. And the rebound, and that is huge for them. Ray Gallegos came away with it and finds Diaz on the other end. A seven-point run for Nebraska. And, and see, this is what makes Jeter so imposing because when he gets the ball, he's so strong, you have to respect him because he will go coast to coast. You see Morningstar picked him up, and then he's able to just hit the wide open Diaz, cut into the basket. That's that senior leadership that he brings to this team and why they're sticking into this ball club only down three. That's Jeter right over Sadler's right shoulder. Boy, the little head fake was subtle. Jeter is the only player in the Big 12 who is averaging as many as 10 points, four rebounds, and four assists. And in conference plays, even doing better than that, 12, 5, and 2. And you can see the thickness of his body. He's bigger than a lot of the other guys. He was a football player at Cincinnati, a wide receiver, before he transferred to Nebraska. What did you say to me? about Jeter I, I just said he had a huge body and he had that no you said he had a football player's head he yeah said, he does you he, said got he had that a big, big head. He got that I didn't want to say that on TV but I mean <laughs> he's, he's a guy that we well then call, you shouldn't have said it. we would call him a point <laughs> forward because he's a point guard but he's got that forward body and he's able to use that physically to go at Kansas Reed not a bad thing to say he's got a big head, is it? I'm not trying to kill a guy on national TV. Well, how are you killing him? I mean, he's got a big head, but you All know, right, it's well, a football I mean, that's head. Just, it's a football head. That's what you said. He's got a football head. I said, what is a football head? He said, well, look at the size of it. All I know is he makes a lot of things happen for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and they are happening this afternoon against Kansas. Doug Bell in Studio 66, exciting finish in College Station where in overtime, Perry Jones has been unreal for Baylor today. The freshman gets the offensive rebound, the putback, hits the free throw. He has 27 points. We're all tied at 74 with 50 seconds, Brad. That's a good one there, and we got a good one going here. Kansas by five. Now, they're playing at a pretty good pace, so we want to just show you this now because 70 is the magic number. Kansas has only been held under 70 points three times all year. All year, they're two and one. Nebraska is 0 and three when they give up 70 points. They've only allowed 70 points three times. Well, yeah, and that's the magic number because you only can't get 70 on Nebraska the way they play that stifling defense. But Nebraska doesn't have the firepower to stay with Kansas if this goes up into the higher digits. You wouldn't think. They right, but the way they're shooting the, now. What? Ray Gallegos knocking down that last shot. And just like bad offense is contagious, as you see from Nebraska, good offense is just as contagious. There's the old man. Hey, but that good offense has been contagious for Kansas all year long. Two threes for Morningstar. Six-point game. And a steal by Reed. So open. Yeah.
In for Marcus Morris, or for Marquise rather. And knocked away. Look at the hustle by Reed. But the Huskers have it. McCray. Gallegos could not finish. And, and you notice every time Marquise or Marcus gets the ball on the block, they're immediately double teamed. And it's going to Nebraska. Phillips 66 is proud to be presenting sponsor of Big 12 basketball. The next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 gasoline, specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Phillips 66, hard working gas. Okay, you notice now with Thomas and Robinson in the game, you have. Marquise playing the three, and so they've gone from a dominating front line to a near impossible to guard front line uh, with that size. I mean, the last two games, Thomas Robinson had 17 points, nine rebounds off the bench. Uh, arguably the best post player in the country coming off the bench. We've got a double technical being assessed here as uh, Morris and Diaz got involved, and maybe we'll be able to see it. And, and that's and the scramble kind of, for the loose ball. Well, and that's kind of a smart play by Diaz because one thing that has kind of gotten to the Morris twins with their history is kind of getting a little bit too heated and emotional, and that's a way to get them out of the game. But you can see Morris looking at Diaz like, what are you doing? What, what are you getting all excited about? You know, and I'm not sure a little bit of that was not Morris uh, still having Robinson's back. I, I think everybody who follows the sport is aware of the the awful time Thomas Robinson has been through losing his grandparents and his mother within uh, one at a time within about a three week period and the way his teammates have rallied around him. The NCAA uh, did a great thing in helping the the team uh, be allowed to go at not at their expense to the funeral and uh, well, a lot of that happened just the night before uh, Kansas only loss at home to Texas. And, so there anytime Robinson's involved and it was Robinson on the floor with Diaz scrapping for the ball and and uh, the Morris is still kind of looking out for him his whole team is every single one of them and, and he's reciprocating in the way he's playing and you really my heart goes out to him and I, I really love the way that he's handled the whole situation uh, on the flip side you can tell these officiating crew is probably going to cut down on the, the jawing between the players. They don't want this to get out of hand. That's a very strong rebound by Brandon Richardson. Oh, Diaz can't hold it. Ball's going to Nebraska. I'll tell you what, now this, I like the way Paul Jansen and his crew are handling this game right now. It's a little physical. But they're letting them play, and yet they're keeping a lid on things. Yeah, they are, and, and you've got to ma match the physicality, and Nebraska has done that uh, in bunches, uh, doing a good job staying with this explosive Kansas offense. Six-point game for the Jayhawks. And, and really one of the reasons why these teams are able to play each other so well because they basically run the same offense. It's all based on the high low. Kansas runs a little bit more ball screens uh, which Nebraska can't do because the lack of quickness of their big men. But they run similar styles offensively between the two of them. Good look at Brandon Richardson as he takes his seat. They may run the same offense but Kansas runs it faster and, and they greater don't, volume. And they don't have the <laughs> same players and either. So that, that's a big difference. Big difference. Don't have those Morris twins down there. No, here's Diaz. Nice little baby hook on the baseline. And, and that's where Diaz is so effective. Quick off the left shoulder, quick jump hook, able to get it up before the defense can go down there and double team. Uh, that shot is virtually impossible to defend. This foul is on Diaz. And, and I just want you to watch how quickly Diaz gets it and goes up into a shooting motion into the shot he does it before Robinson even knows he's got the ball as I said when you move that quickly it's virtually impossible to defend third team foul on the Huskers well, too much time for Marcus Morris and still a foul, but look at Robinson and so you see Robinson cleaning up on the glass it almost looked like a pass it went to him so cleanly and then showing that explosiveness going up for the nice dunk to quiet the crowd put that mute button on that crowd I'll tell you what he is he is an emotional player and those are fun to watch 
And he even told Coach Self, like, look, I need you to coach me the way you did before. Don't go easy on me. I'm still your player. Coach me. A three for Tony McRae, his second of the day. I'm going to have to ask Coach Sadler, but I don't know if they've ever shot this well from beyond the arc in his whole tenure as a coach here at Nebraska. Really coming up big against Kansas. Listen to this crowd. What a great atmosphere here in Lincoln. And a reach in, McRae commits his first foul. Kansas lead over Nebraska is only three, and we'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. Doug Bell in Studio 66, final second in overtime. Down in College Station, Baylor has the basketball. Game is tied. Tough shot goes up, but check out Anthony Jones. Johnny on the spot, throws in the shot. They lead by two, and then on the inbounds play, the steal. Baylor goes to four and four in league play. AM now drops their third in a row. Brad, tough loss for the Aggies. Well, I'll tell you what, and, and it seems like Doug, uh, that loss at home to Texas took a little starch out of uh, Mark Sturgeon's team. And, and there have been a couple of, you know, Baylor needed that. Boy, Baylor needed that like Kansas State needed their win at Iowa State today. Yeah, but there's that big bunch up in the middle of the Big 12 standings with only one loss between three and nine. So all wins are important in Big 12 play. That's why this next month is going to be so much fun to watch in Big 12 basketball. McCray is able to pluck down the little runner that was missed by Taylor. And look at the three-point shooting. Nebraska has only had two games this year where they've shot better than 50% from outside the arc. And, and see, that's when you have to realize time and situation. Yeah, you're shooting well from the perimeter, but it's because you've gotten good looks at the basket. One pass and a shot is not a good look. You need to wait and let your offense get you good shots. Taylor. Markeith. And, and just see how quickly Marquise gets rid of the rock and gets it back. And how quickly he puts it in the basket. And, and see, that's when you have confidence as a player to get the ball away because you know you're going to get it back. He got the, rid of the ball, repost, got down deep, got the ball back for an easy layup. That's an efficient basketball team with Kansas. Almeida back in the game, started today. McCray strong. That should be blue. That's a Kansas basketball. We're closing in on the halfway point of the conference season. And of course, it wraps up with the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship returning to the Sprint Center in Kansas City in March. A limited number of all sessions tickets will be available for the general public by ticket lottery. You've got to register by Sunday, by tomorrow, by SprintCenter.com or Big12Sports.com. And this foul is going against Drake Baranek. Well, and you just saw Tyrell Reed going towards the basket, attacking. And he's a player that you, you might not always notice him in the stats line, but he is so important to Kansas, averaging more minutes than any player for the whole Kansas team. And he, he's really been the most consistent perimeter player for Coach Self. And, and Coach Self talked uh, many praising words about him yesterday. And you can see how he runs the team when he's out there from the outside as well as when he attacks the rim. He's also an exceptional free throw shooter on a team whose one flaw, of course, I just jinxed him. Well, you're jinxing everybody here. Yeah, well, I'm not jinxing everybody, but uh, I'll tell you that it's the one thing Kansas has done poorly. They're last in the Big 12 in conference play in free throw shooting. And Travis Relliford has come in to make an appearance for Kansas. Trying to expand a six-point lead. That ball was tipped. Reed to Morris. Marcus. Johnson's back. Relliford. Marquise to Reed into Marcus. Almeida blocked that one. I don't know if it's a block shot or a block pass, but it's a block. Well, if you look at this, Mark. Mark is going up for the, the pass, and the, just the size of Almeida taking up space was able to make that defensive play for Nebraska. Relliford. 
Nine to shoot. I don't know if they know about the shot clock. We got to speak up. Markeef, three to shoot. Reed knows. Trip. Head fake. Maybe he didn't know. Didn't have time for the head fake. Coach Self doesn't like that. That's going to get Tyshawn Taylor back off the bench. It takes a lot to furrow the brow of a man whose team is that good. We were talking to the Kansas coaches last night, and I, I asked Bill if he would wince if I suggested that his team was a national championship contender because most good coaches don't want you to talk about that kind of stuff. But Bill said, well, I don't think there's any great teams. I said, I, I didn't say you were better than anybody else. I said, you're in the conversation. And he said, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. McCray has knocked down three threes. Nebraska's having its best three-point shooting day of the entire year. And, and what Nebraska has done is risen to the level of their opponent playing the number two team in the country at doing exceptional from the perimeter today against Kansas. Almeida kicked that one. Because one thing you're always going to get with Doc Sadler's team is a stifling defense. Uh, that's been his signature throughout his tenure here at Nebraska. Uh, but what they're exhibiting today is a deft touch from behind the arc. It's something that has been sparse, a good shooting as a whole. Field goal percentage in the paint as well as from the perimeter. So, man, they are playing out of their minds right now offensively. Shooting that way anyway. Taylor leads back to six. First points for Tyshawn Taylor. And, and what's been so effective for Kansas is they've been patient. The way to attack the way Nebraska plays that pack defense is not to take that first, second, third shot, but to keep working around and then take the open look. McCray was due to miss, and he didn't miss that one by much. Yeah, that was a heat check. Heat check? Yeah, heat check. He was checking to see if he was still hot, <laughs> but he wasn't. <laughs> well, he wasn't until he wasn't. Well, this foul is going against Nebraska. And I believe it'll be on McCray. His second. Sometimes when you do that heat check, the coach will give you a bench check. <laughs> and you'll see how hot you get on that on the bench. Because one thing you never have when you're shooting and he like is that. getting that bench check. Yeah, and one thing with a coach like Doc Sadler, you never have a blank check. No, yeah, you're right about that. Now Kansas, of course, is leading the country, the country, in field goal percentage, 51 percent but from the free throw line there it is last in the big 12. Now Marcus Morris has been a better free throw shooter in the conference than for the year. Well and, and it's, it goes to who's shooting the free throws with Marcus and Markeith you know if Tyrell was shooting a lot shooting 84 percent it'd be a different story uh, but that's all concentration on that free throw line. Six point game. Richardson. Well, what a job Robinson's doing on Diaz down there. They can't find it. And so Brandon Richardson just does it himself. And Nebraska's doing a good job of uh, attacking the gaps in the space their post are creating and then just laying the ball up. When they defeated Colorado, they had 19 layups. You cannot allow that for this Nebraska ball club. Morning star. Johnson. Bell making a big contribution with the start that he got today. Jeter, a good one for the Ads. And there you saw one of those layups. They're getting far too easy shots against the defense of Kansas. And you can be assured that Coach Self is going to talk to his team about that once halftime comes around. Marcus draws a double team. Robinson then got fouled by Walker. What a game we've got going on here in Lincoln this afternoon. And you're going to get a good game when you get a look like that from Jeter and a finish like that from Diaz. A two point game. Sun Life Financial has never taken government bailout money, yet, no one knows our name. That's about to change. So you'll pay for the tour, but I have to change my name. No, you're still KC, but from now on, they will be the Sun Life Band.
It's funky. Sooner or later, you'll know our name. Sun Life Financial. Coming up on the Studio 66 Halftime Report, a Michael Jackson-type finish in College Station. There was Bedlam in Stillwater and all the top 25 scores and highlights. Brad, Steven, it's not the Super Bowl, but it is a Super Saturday. Talk to you in a few. No, it, it's, it is not, uh, but right there is a fellow who knows how to turn out players to get there. The athletic director at Nebraska, Dr. Tom Osborne, put a few in in that big that big game and I don't think the black eyed peas are going to be here at halftime but they're going to have a good show I'm sure of that I'm sure we could find some somewhere some black eyed some, peas some, some restaurant they, somewhere they'd around be here. a little different yeah they'd be a little different I, I dare you to find for yeah not as pleasing to the eye I, I would assume Thomas Robinson for a 50 percent free throw shooter that that looked money <laughs> What was he, five for five in his yeah. last game? So he's got a nice feeling, good confidence from the line, and it's, it's good to just get, wow. Did you call glass? Did you hear glass, Jim? I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I said. Hey, but when you go five for five the previous game, it's just rolling for you, so, you know, that's when you just put it up. There's a lot of emotion going on with this whole Kansas team, and it's not to be, and, you know, we, we don't want to overdo it. People are sorry for their circumstances. They don't want to hear too much about it, but I'm just telling you, don't, and, and you've been on teams that have had things happen. You cannot, with young men, underscore the importance of an emotional kind of a situation like that. Well, and in my eyes, that was a bonding experience for this team, and it brought them so much closer. And, and literally, this team is like brothers now, the way they brought them in. Their mothers were comforting him uh, before the game and after the game. And, and that's going to help this team throughout the long run uh, when they try for that national championship race. They are an absolute Final Four contender. Robinson cleans it off. That was a rebound. Morningstar. And talking to Coach Self yesterday, he said this team is so special when Brady Morningstar is on his game. You see him take it coast to coast and rise up for that nice three, making it tough to defend this ball play. Richardson, Richardson answers. Look at Nebraska stay close. Diaz got a, ha a little hack on Robinson's arm. And that's three fouls on him, and that's going to be a problem. Almeida's going to come back in the game. But I, I think if you watch Kansas play, you just watch him game by game, Stephen, and you see this young fella just growing with every bounce of the ball. And they have another impact freshman who's not able to play today, and that's the impact freshman of the game. Josh Selby, presented by Sun Life Financial. Annuities, employee benefits, life insurance. He's the Big 12 Rookie of the Week. See what he did his last three games. Well, well he's impacting the bench rotation. Like The, the bench guys ha have a nice little rotation that they like to sit in for good luck, and right now he's affecting their, their mojo a little bit. They were very happy that the injury that he suffered in practice Wednesday, we're talking about Josh Selby, did not the, the negative uh, the uh, x-rays and MRIs were all negative. This is an over the back this foul is going against the Jayhawks. And now, now Brad I want you to keep an eye on Almeida and just look at the size and how difficult it is for Robinson to keep him out of the lane and he just has to be big when he plays. Well he can and, do and, that. Right and you just look at how he just gets under the the lane and creates so much havoc with his size. Morris pulled that one down. Now Morningstar. And it's really important when Morningstar is in the game, the best post passer on the team. And when he's knocking down that J, it's such a complimentary role, makes it difficult to defend. Look at the double team on Markeith. Look at Reed open. The way Kansas runs their offense is just poetry in motion. I mean, it's so pretty to watch the way they hit the open man, so selfless, just looking for their player, going from a good shot to a great shot, every possession. Let's see, is this foul going against Walker? We're, we're going to look at this last play. Taking eye on Almeida and just that size, and, and Robinson, a uh, little bit of acting, uh, 
And if you're playing against Almeida, you're trying to get him out of this court as quick as possible. Robinson doesn't want to mess with that 310 pounds. But okay, excuse me? 310-ish. Excuse me? 10-ish. Okay, I know you're used to the linemen of the of the. the well, let's just say this. The guy, he, he reportedly came in. Now, we're talking about a guy who's a two-time JUCO All-American. He looked. He reminds me. He looks like Hagrid guarding Hogwarts. I wow. mean, the guy is just enormous. And, and, and he was a soccer player as a kid growing up in Brazil. There, there he was, is. There was no magic in that. Um, how Robinson found himself on the ground. That was just pure size. I mean, when you play against a player like that, their center of gravity. You can't move them, and you got to try to pull the chair from under him or whatever. And he's trying to front him. Uh, but the best thing is you don't want. Almeida to be able to get low and so he's going to the front to the back uh, but that's a guy that you got to have help though from well, your teammates the, the reason the officials were looking at that if you saw if you watched his elbow that's the point of uh, emphasis this year they want to they make sure that that was only incidental contact and, and what that was was a basketball play when they say it's something that will happen in the normal course of playing basketball he wasn't going for his head uh, but they as you said Brad they, they want to check to make sure Kansas is on a 10-2 run that has opened up their second 10-point lead. And that's they scored what makes, the first six points of the game, five points of the game. And that's what makes Kansas so dangerous is those runs that they make, and Doc Sadler felt that they could hang with them with their defense. Ubell's defense forced Markeith Morris to take an extra step. And as you can see, that's going to get Mario Little back up off the bench. Markeith only has one foul, and Bill Self would like to protect him a little bit for these last few seconds of the half. It's, it's not a surprise that Nebraska has hung in with Kansas. They are one of only two teams, only two teams all year, who have even had a double-digit lead on the Jayhawks. And the other one was Texas in the only game Kansas has lost. So Nebraska knows how to play them. Nebraska waiting for that last shot. And Richardson has gotten himself to the line. That's a nice job by the junior from Los Angeles. And for the most part, Nebraska has done an exceptional job of taking what Kansas defense has been giving them. And you see Richardson attacking the middle, trying to attack the gap, and just did a good job being strong with that ball, going up with it, and creating that contact to get onto the free throw line. Earlier we showed you one Big 12 tradition brought to you by Champion. What's your favorite? You can vote on your favorite tradition by going to Facebook.com slash champion and clicking on the poll tab. P-O-L-L. Richardson, 95% in conference plays, number two in the Big 12 in free throw shooting. And with these two, he is now 23 of 24 from the line. Taylor a little walk and now you see what can happen going into halftime maybe and what you're doing right now is, is giving Nebraska a great opportunity to go into halftime with an extremely amount high amount of, of momentum and Nebraska want to get wants to get a good look right here and try to reignite this crowd but you really can't play this first half any better than Nebraska has today here in the Devaney Center and against this team it, it probably can't you probably can't Again, the score is at the pace that Kansas likes it. It's an eight-point game at halftime, and Nebraska has given Kansas all they want. Doc Sadler wants a little, uh, he wants a little word with Paul Jansen on the way out. Kansas 42, Nebraska 34 in Lincoln, and we're going to go back to Studio 66 and Doug Bell and Brandon Manson. Doug? It's an eight-point game at the Devaney Center in Lincoln. The last time Kansas will play here as a Big 12 opponent of Nebraska, which is on its way to the Big 10. Brad Sham and DePaul Hall of Famer Stephen Howard. It's an eight-point game. It feels like it's closer than that, and that'll probably take us right to the Shelter first half highlights. Well, you're right, Brad, and, and for a Kansas team that normally uses the Marcus Twins as a conduit offensively, that interior presence has been somewhat lacking. It's been all about the Brady Morningstar Tower Reed three 
three-point barrage show, both of them going six for eight from downtown, really feeling it in for Nebraska. It's been all about Tony McRae going two for four from beyond the arc in the first half, really lighting them up and energizing that perimeter attack for Nebraska. First half highlights brought to you by Shelter Insurance for your auto, home, and life seat shelter today. Get excited, kids. Here come the Huskers who have shot from three-point range, three out of four, um, or, or rather four out of eight, and that has kept them in the game. Well, we talked about it this morning, Brad, the, the way that Coach Sadler had them preparing this morning in their shoot-around. He's not a guy that runs them through just a little bit of layup. They get after it in the morning, and they came out here prepared to go against Kansas. Ubel didn't get the roll. Kansas got the board. Kansas to see if they can try to get the Morris twins started down on the perimeter, wanting to get them more active in the offense. Marcus drawing double teams all day and throws it away to Richardson. And he did draw the foul from Tyshawn Taylor, his first, and that'll give us a chance to take a look at our Papa John's first half stats. And, and both of these teams are shooting tremendous percentages from beyond the arc. Uh, I guess what really stands out at me is, is the the six point differential in points in the paints a place as I said earlier where Kansas normally is dominant uh, but other than that this team these both these teams are playing pretty equal. Richardson three for three for the day Nebraska at the foul line going to have to be the good free throw shooting team that it is. And as you can see, both Jeter and Richardson are, aren't intimidated in the least of the Twins attacking them relentlessly, each possession going right towards the rack. It's hard to double team everybody, and they have double teamed Marcus Morris. Markeith hurt him a little bit early. And that's a Doc Sadler staple. They're going to double the post and try to get turnovers like they just did uh, and create fast break opportunities. Markeith out to Morningstar. And Ubel commits the Cardinal sin. He fouled the shooter shooting a three-pointer. You hit the nail on the head with that, Brad. A cardinal rule among coaches, players alike. Never, ever do you foul a jump shooter. On top of that, never, ever, ever will you foul a three-point jump shooter. Uh, Ubel closed out a little bit too hard on Brady Morningstar. And He's playing that first free throw, so. Uh, and he is a 75% foul shooter, but it will say it again, and this is something that it, as, the, as you get closer to tournament time, they're going to have to clean this up a little bit because Kansas is the worst free throw shooting team in the Big 12 in conference play. Now, they do everything else so well that, you know, it doesn't interfere with them much, but in the month of March it can. Yeah, I mean, you look at Memphis, and then you look at uh, what happened to Kentucky that those free throw rolls will get you because the, the games are going to be tight in March Madness once you get to the tournament you can, you can bet all your money on that well, the lead is back to eight A little dribble weave action for Nebraska and he's trapping Jeter now Caleb Walker and as we said in the first half one and done will not work for Nebraska and you can see that halftime adjustment by coach self doubling the ball when Jeter gets it, trying to make other team, other players beat them, does not want Jeter to be effective going towards the rim. Big rebound for Diaz. Jeter only took four shots in the first half. Yeah, Jeter only took four shots, but he was effective doing what he just did with that pass to Walker, being a facilitator with seven, now eight assists. For Nebraska. Well, Richardson with that three, and if that is an assist, it's his eighth of the game. His season high is nine. Oh, and there's a foul. And he tried to reach in and get it, but here's what he did on the other end. Well, we're going to look at that last play, and, and you're just going to see the strength of Jeter able to just attack and draw the defense to him. And all Richardson needed was that split second to get that shot up, and then after that, none but net. Great facilitation by Lance Jeter. Reed lost it. Gave Richardson a chance to get a hand on it, but it hit the sideline, so it's Kansas ball. 
And what you're really seeing with Nebraska is whenever anything positive happens, Lance Jeter is somewhere in the vicinity. Great football anticipation on that last steal. He's just doing whatever he can to lead this team. Taylor lost the handle. One thing that uh, Doc Sadler was really preaching was not doing that, not committing turnovers because they, they haven't had many bad losses. They've already won as many games as they won all last year, and their Doc thought they'd be better. But the tur 22 turnovers against Kansas State the other night, that he said, that just wasn't us. Yeah, and, and I said, why did that happen? He said, I have no idea. When Kansas State scored 21 points off that, which is really what, what, what hurt you. Look at Brandon Richardson. What a nice job of getting that ball down in the paint. Talking to Sadler before the game, everything that he wanted to happen has happened. They're hitting shots, they're hitting from the perimeter, and they're hitting layups just like they did, did against Colorado when they made 19 layups. Really good no call out there, and then Marcus Morris knocks down a three. I mean, can you be more impressed, not with just Marcus, but with Markeith? I mean, both of them. Markeith was two for two from three in the first half. Now Mar Marcus is two for three. Uh, just amazing display of skill set for the big men of Can Kansas. No, I, there's a nice job by Diaz of keeping that ball out of Morris's hands. And then the other Morris, Markeith with a steal. Reed. Excuse me. Morningstar. I think there's a, a small number of teams in the country that you can throw a blanket over. Maybe it's a half dozen that are capable of winning the national championship, and this team in the blue today is one of them. Well, and, and that's the importance of second chance opportunities. Kansas is too good just to give them one shot, but when you give them repeatedly two offensive opportunities down the court, they're going to do just like what just happened, kick the ball out to Brady Morningstar, who's just sitting there in the wings waiting with plenty of time to set up and when you get a, any three point shooter that much time they're going to knock it down. Taylor called for his second foul and that gets him to the bench and Elijah Johnson back in and here's Jeter. Nine point game it's just amazing how quickly Kansas opens that was three a moment ago. Robinson. It, it's hard to be impressed more than you are if you watch him especially in person you would be with Robinson. This one's going against Markeith Morris. Nine point game. And we'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. Kansas by nine and I gave the last foul to the wrong 21. It was on that one. Jorge Brian Diaz and that's why he's sitting on the Nebraska bench because he's now got four fouls. The Kansas 21 Markeith Morris one of our Capital One impact performers with eight double doubles and eight point eight rebounds to lead the Big 12 in both categories. And we take a look at some potential finalists for our Cap One Cup impact performance of the week and Markeith Morris would be one of those guys. Log on to CapitalOneCup.com to vote for this week's impact performance. Well, look at that stat right there, Brad. Marquise leading the Big 12 in rebounding. He only has one rebound thus far in this game. Did not get a rebound in the first half. I don't know if those, his offensive uh, proclivity this game and the way he's doing so well from the outside is keeping him from on the glass, but that's an area that he needs to step up his game because Nebraska is leading them uh, in the rebounding this game. Or oh, actually, no, Kansas is caught up and now is leading by two, but they got to have him on the boards to lead the charge. Robinson is now uh, a six for six from the line in this game. So he's got 11 in a row over the last two games, if my math is right. And, and you're counting that bank shot he had in the first half. Did too, he right? go in the basket? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're he went right. The basket. OK, OK, there you go. And besides, I thought I heard him call glass. <laughs> Lead is 11. Look at Jeter. I think Nebraska needs to do that. I think they need to try to get Jeter going on the, on the uh, scoreboard. Well, yeah, and he's just so strong. Uh, Elijah Johnson just does not have anything to combat that sheer strength that Lance Jeter has down on the block. Good box outs by the white shirts, and McCray came down with it. We 
the size of that screen on me to sets up there. It's like the Great Wall, isn't it, Mr. Champ? Telling you. Now Jeter. Almeida. That one went off Reed. And then we're going to take a look at Lance Jeter's last bucket, and you're going to see that strength that I was talking about. Once he gets down there, he feels the body contact. He needs the body contact. And then after that, he just goes up strong and lays it in of playing that physical point guard for Nebraska. Gallegos. In for Almeida, and one. No, 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 foul before the shot. Foul before the shot. And, and if you can look at just the bodies banging down low and see how difficult it is to defend Almeida because he's just being big, using his size. And once he gets it down there, you have to foul him because he's literally under the basket, just showing how difficult it is to get around Almeida. Foul was on Robinson, his first. Nine point Kansas lead. We might have had to sew two jerseys together for Almeida's jersey. I mean, that's a big jersey right there. Absolutely, you wouldn't want to get close to him up. No, I, I bring Almeida out in the perimeter, just like the Morris twins have been doing. I think that was on Morningstar. And, and take a look at this last play and see what the crowd's upset about if it's a goaltending, but that looked good to me. Marquise doing a good job anticipating the shot and being that second line of defense, which makes Kansas so difficult defensively because you always have somebody coming on the help side to help your defender. Caleb Walker at the line. Doc Sadler is a working umpire Jeff Muller. Back to what you were saying earlier, Brad, about that Almeida screen. If you can't get open, on an Almeida screen, then you just don't want to get open. Because, I mean, he's going he's gonna to get some separation for you on the offensive end. Unless they brought somebody from the other side of it, because that's a big one. In for Markeith. Little double team on the post. Good team defense by the Nebraska Cornhuskers, huh? And, and what you're seeing by Kansas it, with Markeith with that errant pass it, you really they did a lot better when they were reversing the ball throwing it out to the perimeter and then letting them throw it back on the inside a, a little bit of haste with the offensive execution or lack thereof with the Kansas Jay Jayhawks that team defense allowing Nebraska to kind of hang in there Jeter and the whistle blew Tyshawn Taylor. That's three on Taylor. And again, if you joined us along the way, Kansas playing without Josh Selby today. The freshman of the week in the Big 12. There's uh, Selby. See the boot? See the boot on his right ankle? He uh, suffered a stress reaction in practice on Wednesday. MRI and x rays both negative. And I asked their SID Chris Thiessen why he was warming up and he said well because he's a freshman and just trying to go to the last second trying to work it out and he looked good in warm-ups but I, I believe the coaching staff they're airing on the side of caution with their you know fabulous freshman yeah it says stress fracture but I believe that it was not a fracture I believe it was a stress reaction we were told that there was no fracture So Jeter will get a rest. The Huskers are on a six-point run. And that's just good time management by Coach Sadler getting Jeter on the bench right before that next media timeout, trying to get him a little bit extra blow for that long run down the stretch. A little zone by Nebraska now. Oh, good luck by Little. Better move by Markeith Morris. And there you just saw the strength of Markeith going up through the bodies to lay it in, but superior interior passing by the Jayhawks to get that play done. McCray. Look at Walker crash. And if you're the big man of Kansas, you've got to be ashamed of yourself letting the point guard go up there and snatch 
the ball away from you. Well, the Morris twins, I know we'll hear a lot about that in the film session. Oh, Almeida got his money's worth on that one. But it was a silly foul. Oh, good. And look at Markeith. Markeith said, I don't care how big you are, I want some of you. There will be some left over. Well, here we go looking at that bucket, and this is the Morris twins saying, I don't know how they do it in Brazil, but this is how we do it in the U.S. of A. Getting up next level on Almeida. They did that. They, uh, they trapped the ball out a little higher in the lane, and then they forgot about the back door. And uh, I don't know if Almeida really wanted to get these guys angry. Well, I think Almeida, though, once he starts going in a, in a certain direction, it's a little hard for him to stop. The free throw woes continue a little bit for the Jayhawks. Walker, oh, he's open. And that's the hardest shot in basketball to make when you pump fake and then wait and then take the shot. You just got to take it initially when you're open. Elijah Johnson to Morningstar. Marcus Johnson. Here comes Gallegos. And the way Elijah Johnson had been playing, he earned himself a little niche play uh, with Kansas, finding a little role for himself, but uh, not necessarily in that look that he just had from the corner. But he's been given good minutes for the Jayhawks. McCray hit three of those in the first, or two of them in the first half. Now Johnson, yeah, Johnson will find himself sitting next to Coach Self in a minute. Boy, well, I think in that last three-point shot, McCray was a little bit too open, needed someone to fly at him, and, and sometimes it's a little bit easier to hit a shot when you have the defender running at you. McCray not happy with himself for missing that last shot, and Tyrell Reed, the one who came back in the Kansas lineup, He'll make the trigger the inbounds and here there he goes right into the lane right now replacing Johnson. Well and actually the smarter play with McCray because there wasn't anyone guarding him would have been just to take it to the rim and lay the ball up. You've got to take those possessions when they come and take advantage of them when you play against a good defensive team like Kansas. Marcus Morris. Reed. Tremendous skip pass, great ball reversal by Marquis. And, and Tyrell Reed has been dead eye from that baseline drift corner where he's been setting up. Diego's can't get it. And the ball's coming back the other way. We've got a 10-point game with 11.25 to play. The Jayhawks causing the Husker fans to say, what's it take? Because Nebraska led by Lance Jeter as they always are. Will not go away and you saw that look on Marcus Morris's face. They look a little bit determined. When, as Coach Selfie said they felt they got embarrassed the first time against Nebraska and Lawrence and they were determined not to come out like that this game and, and you can tell by the way from jump start they've come out going at the Cornhuskers on both ends. Keith out of the post, repost. Ubell will get his third foul. And there you saw the best perimeter post passer by Kansas showing how to do it. Nice fake pass to the baseline. And he really just faked out the whole front line of Nebraska. And you saw McCray going out to the three point shooter and then threw it down to Marcus Morris on the baseline. And that's how you get your big men open shots. Great fake pass, and then down to the big man on the block. Marcus Morris over two from the line today as Diaz replaces Ubel in the Nebraska lineup. But you're right, Brad, when you talked earlier about the free throw woes. I mean, that, I mean, when you play against a team like Texas, or a team that's playing really well, or Ohio State, you're going to need to be shooting in the upper 70s and playing exceptionally well to win those games. 
And again, this score, speaking of the upper 70s, it's on the pace that Kansas likes. Averaging 82 points a game. Jeter for the Huskers. You see, this is normally where Nebraska struggles in the half court offensive sets. McCray with his third three of the afternoon. That didn't look to me like they struggled at all, just getting it to their uh, three point shooter of late. Tony McCray, nice from downtown. Back to eight. Right here, I got it. Jeter on the break. I was ready. I was going to protect that pretty face of yours. You had it. I was like, man, I got the way. You looked like you were up there to, to grab it. I broke down. I was ready. And the Huskers are ready. Jeter leading them back. This reminds me of your pool, sir. Yeah, if I only had one statue. <laughs> I'll have that one, lightly seared. Oh. Garçon. I think I'm gonna get this one. I don't think this is for sale. What? He looks a little cold. No, he's fine. <laughs> My turn. Yeah. Phillips 66 is proud to be presenting sponsor of Big 12 basketball. The next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 gasoline. Specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Phillips 66, hard working gas. There's a Jayhawk Mohawk right there. He's trying to rock chop. Pressure for the first time by the Huskers. And Nebraska's been real active defensively, hands everywhere, getting their hands on a lot of loose balls. Yeah, that's not going to make Doc happy to get the Taylor open like that in the back door. And that was a design play by Coach Self, taking advantage of the overplay by Nebraska. Nice backdoor cut, superior pass by Brady Morningstar. That was an excellent execution by the Jayhawks. They have a lot of superior passers, don't they? Now Diaz playing with four fouls. Morningstar cleans it off. Markeith. And when I say the Morris twins are interchangeable, in the elevation of Markeith that I've seen the last month has is, is been amazing. And you just watch Markeith while he trails this play calmly just stepping up Marcus Morris a nice pick and then Markeith just gets the ball has no other shot thought but to shoot the ball and it's just money and wow it's just amazing the ability of those two in the front line that they have here at Kansas look at the three point shooting for the Jayhawks today 11 equals their best game of the year in that department and it caused Doc Sadler to call timeout because the Huskers had been on a little 5-0 run and then you get the basket and then you get the empty possession and then you come back and get the three and Doc Sadler I don't know if he would say this publicly but you know I, I think as they transition to the Big Ten there are a lot of good things and bad things but it, Doc's Doc's teams are going to benefit from that move. Well, they play Big Ten basketball. Right. Uh, it, it, and, but there's nobody in the Big Ten that plays defense like Doc Sadler. Right. Uh, but that style of play, kind well, of methodical, plotting well, a, minute, a little wait bit. Wait a minute. Wisconsin and Michigan State play pretty good defense. They play good defense, but I don't see it as being as stifling in, as a Nebraska defense. But they do play good defense. What, they, what the Big Ten does not have is a Kansas. Now, they got Ohio State, obviously. But you don't, you don't go facing... A&M and Texas and Baylor and Kansas and all the way through. It's just a different style. And, and Michigan State is struggling. And Michigan a little bit. State. Well, right, they're struggling yeah, they're a little struggling. bit this year with their defense. Doc Sadler's team never struggle with defense. They might struggle a little bit to score points, but they're going to lock you up on the defensive end. McCray with his third foul. And, and, and people want to say who can beat Ohio State? This team can beat them. 
I don't know if they will. I don't know if they get a chance. I don't know what will happen, but I know this Kansas team, they can beat Ohio State or anybody else. Well, like you were saying earlier about the parity in basketball, talking to a couple coaches, you watch Ohio State, and they're a great team, but they have flaws. They can be beaten, and it's evident by the way that they play. They're still a great team, and Jared Selinger, for me, is the best freshman, bar none, in college basketball. But as I said, no just great breakaway team in college basketball. 13, I believe this is Kansas' biggest lead. They had an 11-point lead a couple of times. And you wouldn't think Nebraska is built to come back from 13 down with 8.45 to play, but they have not gone away all day. Well, one thing Doc Sadler's team's been able to do all year long is stick around. Been in most games around that 2.30 mark, so look for them to, to close this gap a little bit as this game wanes closer to being over with. Huskers thought maybe Jeter got fouled. Marcus. Taylor back into Marcus Morris. I just love the patience of Kansas. The turnover goes to Jeter. What a feed from Jeter to Gallegos. I believe that's 10 assists for Jeter. And Jeter's done a good, good job shot. knowing that they've put a focus on stopping him to the basket. And whenever the defense comes to him, he just finds an open teammate and feeds them towards the basket, playing unselfishly as a leader for Nebraska. A season high and assists 10 for Lance Jeter. This foul is going to be committed before the shot. <laughs> Jeter with his 10th assist keeps Nebraska in it. We'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. 744 left in Lincoln. It's Kansas 67, Nebraska 56, and we're going to take a look at our sixth man of the game, brought to you by Motel 6. Well, you're looking at a, a career 40% three-point shooter and Tony McRae shooting three for seven from beyond the arc and giving Nebraska a much-needed boost and spark from that bench, and, and he's been all that and then some today uh, for the Cornhuskers. McRae had been a starter. The coach Sandler decided to go with Brandon Ubell in that spot today, and it worked out well. Ubell gave the Huskers a spark right away at the beginning of the game, and McCray obviously has been really solid for them with 11 points off the bench as uh, the free throw is good by Marcus Morris. And what's important to a player, yeah, you like starting, but McCray is still playing starter minutes. He's in there uh, when the game's on the line and, and is important, and that's why he's been able to contribute the way he has today. Marcus had made four in a row before he missed that one. So the Huskers down 12 with seven and a half minutes to play. And the way Nebraska's going to have to get back into this game, they're going to really have to lock down defensively, much like they did in the first half and get some turnovers and score off those turnovers, but they got to play that stifling Nebraska defense to get back into the game. Diaz. McCray with a head fake and threw it away. Good anticipation by Taylor. Marcus Morris. I was as impressed with that defensive stance keeping them down to four seconds and then coming up with the steal and then the unselfishness on the fast break, eventually finding the ball in Marcus Morris's hands. If you can take a quick look again at that fast break and you'll see the quick hands that got the ball into it and then the total unselfishness, just getting it to the open player, don't care who scores, it's just important that we score. That's what makes Kansas an exceptional team and a great team, that unselfish play. Marcus Morris drew his second foul, comes to the bench, and his twin brother, Markeith, comes in. Jeter into Diaz. Robinson was hooking Diaz. Do you see that as he took the pass? Well, Robinson is just, he is so impressive. He's one of those guys, when he's on the floor, it's hard to take your eyes off him. Yeah, you're right. Walker, a little out of control. There he is. Mr. Robinson. Seventh team foul. 
This one in the act of shooting. Walker has two coming. Ubell in and Diaz out. And Robinson with the rebound. They doubled him, Morningstar. <laughs> and there you saw a great fake pass by Robinson on the outlet. Instead of throwing up top, what looked open for a second, just gave it a quick look, look and then great ball reversal to a wide open read on the corner. Five threes for Morningstar today. Milk it just a little. No self calling the play at the top of your screen. Taylor. Markeith to Reed. Ball go to Kansas as uh, Robinson and Richardson vied for the rebound. Well, look at this last pass by Robinson. You see him just look out, nice ball fake, and then saw Morningstar on the opposite side of the court where you know he's going to be, and you just pass it to him, able to shoot it, get it to him in his motion. Nothing but net. Good anticipation there by Brandon Richardson, almost had the steal. And, and that's a dangerous pass, Brad, going cross court like that, especially when you're going against a team like Nebraska that's always playing in the passing lane, always going for steals and gambling. 20 in the game. And Jeter fouls Morningstar. His third team foul number eight. Kenneth Lee, I believe, has a hunch that he's not going to get his first win against Kansas today. Still an eternity in time. A lot of stuff can happen. Oh, boy. But, but playing against a, a powerful and explosive Kansas team, you wouldn't put your money on it, but the fat lady has not sung yet. Nope. Not by a long shot. Morningstar making the most of his start today in place of the injured Josh Selby. I mean, how many teams in America could lose a Josh Selby and still play at the level of efficiency that Kansas has today? 19 for Morningstar, his season high. And Robinson again. The rebound for Kansas. See if at what point Bill Self says, okay, I got Big Monday with Missouri coming up. I'm going to have to think about the, getting some rest for some people. Well, but like he talked about yesterday, he still doesn't see this team being where he wants them. He wants them to keep working on their offense and defense to get to that championship level that they all strive for at Kansas. A foul on you, Bell. His fourth. Here are the standings at this juncture. Texas playing Tech tonight. Going to get to halfway. Kansas. Baylor with a big, big win over AM today. And Stephen told you earlier about the log jam in the middle. Just look at it. Look at all the four and fives. And what's really impressive is just the teams that are battling. And, and that was, the road wins are so important in the Big 12, where it's always been difficult to win in the Big 12. Diaz and his four fouls back in. McCray will have a seat. He's had a nice game today, our sixth man of the game. Robinson with a rare foul shot miss a moment ago. At least rare in the last couple of games. And you heard the you heard the whistle and the foul being called. It's on Markeith Morris. That's his third. And that's really a mental lapse by Markeith. You don't want to give the opposition chances at the basket in an area where they're struggling. Something that you saw Coach Bill Self shake his head when the call came. 
you just got to play smarter than that. That was one Udell really wanted to have go down. Again, a Kansas City youngster. Nebraska's been shut out from the floor for over four minutes. Boy, what's really happened is their three-point shooting has, has gone down to what it normally is. Uh, shooting below 20% in the second half. Tyshawn Taylor draws his fourth foul. Marcus Morris will replace Robinson. There's a look at Jeter who's back in. Well, well then I mentioned how do you sit a Josh Selby and still be competitive. You look at Tyshawn Taylor, a guy who is as explosive as Josh Selby, as you saw, able to get up and down the court in a couple of seconds in that last play. Uh, but that man on the free throw line, Lance Jeter, he's the one that's going to have to make a big push to get Nebraska back into this ball game. The score got a little bit lopsided pretty quickly. You saw the game Jeter's having. Four and a half to play at the Devaney Center. Johnson. Morning star. And you're going to see Kansas really take their time each possession, try to get the look that they want in, in a position that they can really wait and see to get that offensive look that they want. Morning star with five to shoot now. Slapped away by Diaz, who's touched it last. One second will be left on the shot clock when we come back with 3.56 left in the game and Kansas up by 16. 3.56 to play in Lincoln with Kansas up 75-59 and we have selected our most valuable player of the game brought to you by Sun. Well, playing for the most efficient basketball team in the country. With Kansas shooting 52%, Brady Morningstar put on a clinic from beyond the arc, five for six, 83% from downtown. And that's just efficient basketball. Six shots, 19 points. Uh, superb job by Brady Morningstar. Five three pointers, a career best for him. Shot clock violation. Remember, they only had one second left on the clock. Bill Self said, what, what? That was what? See Chris Piper there right over his right shoulder, former great player on the Danny and the Miracles team, and the great Bob Davis. Yeah, he's looking long at the... Long time voice of the Jayhawks. Looking at the score table, was like, that was the quickest one second I've ever seen. One second goes pretty quick. Yeah, it does. Gallegos. Whoops. But Jeter has it. And this one is going off. Oh, no, they're going to say it went off Ubell, and it'll be Kansas ball. Nebraska's going to have to get into some full court pressure to try to disrupt what Kansas is accomplishing on the offensive end. Just patience now by Kansas, just trying to be smart. They're shooting 57%. And this is a situation where a coach would tell his players, unless you have a great shot, uh, I don't want anything put up before we get to 10 seconds each time down the court. It's a very intelligent team, this Kansas team. High basketball, huge all around. Foul on the floor. On Marcus Morris, his third. And this is a great chance to remind you that the Phillips 66 Big 12 Women's Championship returns to Kansas City's historical municipal auditorium March 8th through the 12th. All sessions tickets available right now at Ticketmaster.com and for more women's championship information Big12Sports.com. Udell, who got the start today. Now Tyshawn Taylor will appear in your picture in a moment. He's coming back in the Kansas lineup. There he is, as if by magic. Ubell made them both. 14-point Kansas lead, full court pressure for Nebraska. And Doc Sadler wants him to foul immediate. 
upset they left all that time go off the clock. Sadler, Sadler is uh, asking Drake Baranek, did he not understand exactly what he wanted? This is a good basketball coach right there, folks. And, and Drake Baranek is a good story, a guy that was playing at the Division II school, Nebraska Kearney, always wanted to play for Nebraska and just gave Coach Doc Sadler a call and said, hey, you know, could I walk on? And he ended up walking on now as a scholarship. And when you can get big minutes like that from a walk on, it, it helps your team. And it's a long history of walk ons for Nebraska in, in Doc Sadler's program. Yeah, he's made some important contributions to them off the bench. 16 points again, the lead for the Jayhawks. Look at Morningstar get in the grill. Gallegos lost the handle. And quickly fouls Marcus Morris. And both teams are shooting in the double bonus now in the last 237. This was a uh, an eight point game at halftime. Nebraska had a couple of runs cut it down to three once or twice. Well, and Marcus Morris was just talking with Elijah Taylor and pretty much the conversation went something like. Yeah, I know I'm a little bit below my average. I need to get a couple free throws. So I held the ball a little bit longer than normal. <laughs> Let me get on this charity stripe and get closer, a little bit closer to my average. Marcus averaging 16 a game, 19 in conference play. And when you look across the board with Kansas, pretty much every player has elevated their game, averaging higher points, more rebounds. And that's when you see the superior play for, for good teams like Kansas. Next week on Saturday, boy, we got look at this. This is good stuff. Oklahoma, Missouri, or AM and Texas Tech in Lubbock. That's at 12:30 Central next Saturday. Check your local listings to see which game you'll get. Marcus Deadman, that's a guy playing at a very high level yep. for Missouri, potential play of the year candidate. But then you got Chris Middleton with AM, a star in the making, and that's a guy with tremendous pro potential. Those are the 1230 games next Saturday on the Big 12 Network. And those will both be really interesting games. Markeith Morris knocks one down at 3 o'clock next week. These Jayhawks will be back at home against Iowa State. And check the local listings that game three o'clock central time next Saturday on the Big 12 Network. Richardson replacing Jeter who will get a round of applause and a pat on the fanny. And a season high 10 assists for Lance Jeter today for the Huskers. And you saw with Lance Jeter what makes him that leader for Nebraska, a guy that even though he won scoring was facilitating and, and even on the defensive end leading them with that tough, intensive defensive pressure. Big three for Richardson, his second of the half. 16 for Richardson. And Baranek reaches in and commits the foul. Now we told you earlier that 70 might be a magic number today because Kansas just doesn't get held under 70. And Nebraska doesn't give up only three times had an opponent scored 70 or more on Nebraska and Kansas wasn't one of them. But this is what happens. This is the most points Nebraska has given up in a game this year. And Stephen it goes back to what you said earlier about the Kansas coaches thinking their team would play well today. They didn't know if they'd win, but they thought they'd play well, specifically because Nebraska gave them such a good game in Lawrence just a few weeks ago. When I even was talking to Coach Saller about that, and he almost lamented the fact that they only lost by three, saying that it might have been almost better to lose by 25 because they wouldn't be able to sneak up on Kansas and they would be ready for them. And you can saw, by the way, Kansas came out that they definitely were ready and waiting for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Down to a minute and a half remaining. And Little will go to the foul line. Deep bench 
for Kansas. That foul committed by Ubell. When we also talked before the game, Brad, about how something was going to have to break this game. I mean, you had a 14 game winning streak at home with Nebraska and 6 and 0 on the road with Kansas. And one of those perfect records was going to have to get broken. And normally, great offense is going to defeat a great defense, especially in the college ranks. And you saw that here today in the Devaney Center in, in Omaha, Nebraska. Mario Little with his first point, one of a couple of seniors on this Kansas team who redshirted a year ago. And now here come here come some fresh troops. Jeff Withy, big sophomore center, has come into the game, and Travis Relliford. And number 15, Elijah Johnson. There's Travis Relliford. Had some injury problems in the past. Little missing, and Diaz pulls it down for the Huskers. Gallegos got fouled by Little. Well, and you see with the point guards of Nebraska, they have a lot more athleticism that, that Doc Sallers had in previous years with Richardson, Gallegos. I mean, getting up next level air on those layup tries. And Doc Sallers got a lot to build upon with this young team in Nebraska. We'll see uh, what both teams have coming up. The uh, Huskers very much in the thick of the race in that middle of the Big 12. Kansas and Texas, of course, is kind of alone up at the top of it. Well, and with the wins that Nebraska's had, they're on that bubble watch, but they're going to need to win at Baylor for their next game, do some damage against Oklahoma State, and, and win their home game if they're going to try to get some love in the big dance. Yeah, they need, they need to get a couple on the road. Yeah, definitely. I asked Doc today, what, what's been the difference between 14 and 0, and you haven't done anything on the road? And he said, well, look at the places you go. And so they're going to Baylor. That's a very big game for them on Wednesday. And you, know, you got Texas coming up in Austin. That's going to be tough. Here's Neiman missing a three. And Baylor's just playing with a lot of confidence, beating Colorado at home, just beating AM on the road, a tough place to win, College Station. Very. Little with a good screen from Withy. That's a three from Mario Little. Inside the last 30 seconds of the game right now. And another very impressive performance today by Kansas. Robinson got a piece of that one. Then he got, he got a piece of Richardson. Then he got all of the ball. Kansas fans who made the trek to Lincoln are on their feet and applauding. A lot of blue shirts in this sellout crowd today in Lincoln. The last time the Jayhawks will come here with Nebraska leaving the Big 12 and Kansas looking good with a 20 point win. Today's Big 12 Network game has been brought to you by Phillips 66 hardworking gas. Whataburger, just like you like it. Sun Life Financial, annuities, employee benefits, life insurance. Champion, it's how you play. Motel 6, the official economy lodging partner of the Big 12. Get free pizza on Super Bowl Sunday. Go to papajohns.com for details. The Capital One Cup, learn more and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com. And by Russell Stover Candies, America's favorite Valentine's chocolate. Once again, our final score, the Kansas Jayhawks 86 and the Cornhuskers of Nebraska 66. For Stephen Howard and our entire Big 12 crew, I'm Brad Sham. Join us next week for more Big 12 action from Studio 66. And for more information on the Big 12 Network, log on to ESPNplus.com. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports.